and welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to be talking about compound interest. By the end of this video, you'll be able to calculate future and present value using the information that you're given. As always, you can contact me on McClutchyMaths at yahoo.com if you have any questions. And we'll be taking today's information out of exercise 7.4 from the Jacaranda Maths textbook for Year 12 General Maths in Queensland. Let's get started. So let's recall from our QCAA formula sheet, we were given a formula for compound interest and it looks just like this. This is snipped straight off the sheet. So you don't need to memorize this particular formula, but you do need to know what all the variables are and how to use them. So let's look at each variable individually. Firstly, A stands for the amount at the end. Now, we're going to be talking today about present values and future values, which is a new terms that we're introducing. So the amount at the end is an amount in the future. So that's our future value. So when you hear that term, you're being asked to find A. P is our principal and it's also our present value, the amount we have to start with. Nicely, they both all start with P. So that helps us to remember if we're trying to find the present value, we're going to be looking for P. I is our interest rate. Now, just remember that this needs to be calculated. It's not just an interest rate per annum. It needs to be changed from a percentage into a decimal first by dividing it by 100. And then we also need to change that into an interest rate per compounding period. So, for example, if it was a compounded quarterly and we were given an, a per annum interest rate, we would be dividing that by four because there's four quarters in a year. And lastly, we have N, which is equal to the number of compounding periods multiplied by the number of years. So that's our total number of compounding periods for the life of the investment or the loan. Okay, we're going to dig a little bit deeper in that and you'll see how these variables are used in a moment. Let's look at worked example one. And once again, as I mentioned, this comes out of Jacaranda Rand textbook, exercise 7.4. We're going to calculate the future value of $5,000. So future value, remember, we're going to be looking for A. That's going to be invested at 4% per annum compounded annually. So that means we don't have to do anything special to change the interest rate into a compounding interest rate per period. So that's nice. It's an easy-ish question. And that's going to be for five years. And we've got to find our answer correct to the nearest cent. So we know from that last little bit, we might have to do a little bit of rounding. Let's get started on that one. Step one is always going to be the same. We write the formula. So you're just going to find the formula sheet and you're going to copy down the formula for compound interest. Step two, you should always state your variables. Now, I know a lot of people find this part really a bit tedious and a little bit boring, but the QCAA has recommended awarding half a mark for writing the variables down. So you should consider every half mark very important, write it down as well. So firstly, you know that P, the principal, the starting amount or the present value is $5,000 and the interest rate is 4%. Now we need to convert that to a decimal. So we take four and divide that by 100 and we get 0 0.04. We know that N is a number of compounding periods in total. Well, there's five years and it's compounded once a year. So five times one is five. Step three, we simply substitute that into this formula and we're going to solve it. So we're going to have A equals 5,000 times and then in brackets 1 plus 0 0.04 and then to the power of 5. Now I always recommend that you do these questions in the same way that you would approach a BOMDAS or a BIMDAS. So remember that from primary school, brackets first. So we're going to look at what's inside the brackets. We're going to add 1 to 0 0.04. Our next step is B, I. I or BO, that stands for ordinals or indices. So we're going to do the 1.04 to the power of 5 next on our calculator. Now, as you notice in that part there, it comes to 1.2166 and I've got some dot, dot, dots after that. Now, what those little dot, dot, dots represent is that there are a whole lot more decimal places that I'm not going to write down, but I'm going to keep that number on my calculator and I'm not going to round it off on the calculator. If I round too early in the question, my answer will be less accurate. My last step is... Or B O M for BOMDAS, M multiply, I multiply it by 5000 and I get my answer. Now you might think it's finished there, but it's not finished. Step four is I have to write a statement. And it's really important that I use my units of measurement, which is dollars and cents. And the question asks me to round that to the nearest cent. So it's $6,083.26. Now, you might think it's tedious writing a statement, but think about it logically. In that question, do you see anywhere where it says find A? 
No, it doesn't. It says calculate a future value. So it's really important that I don't end my answer with A equals because that doesn't answer the question. I have to write a statement to answer the question. And that statement will cost me a mark if I don't write it. So it's really important. Let's look at another worked example. This is worked example two, also from the same textbook. $4,500 is invested for three years at 6% per annum, compounded monthly. Now, as soon as I see the compounded monthly, I know I'm going to have to convert my interest rate to a monthly interest rate, and I know I'm going to have to convert my N, my period, into the number of compounding periods, which would be three years multiplied by 12 months in a year. I'm also trying to find the future value, so now I'm going to be looking to find A. So same steps that we did last time. I'll zip through these. We write the formula. We state the variables again. Now, this is where there's a little bit of work that has to be done. My principal is 4,500. I get that straight from the question. The value of I, I have to divide that by 100, first of all, to convert it to a decimal. And then I need to divide it by 12 because there's 12 months in a year. So what I end up with is an interest rate per month of 0.005%. Okay, N is going to be 3 times 12 because there's 3 years, 12 months in a year. So there's 36 compounding periods altogether. And I need to do this to show the working there because those little steps of working, the QCAA wards are half a mark and your teacher probably will too in an exam. Step 3, substitute into the formula and solve. Once I've written those variables down, this is the easy step now. I'm simply writing it in and using my calculator to solve it. So I'm writing it down. I'm doing little steps at a time, not jumping straight to the end result because sometimes those intermediate steps are also awarded half marks. I'm not rounding in the middle of the question. I'm waiting to the very end to do my rounding and then I write my statement. The future value of the investment is $5,385.06. Now, I suggest if that went a little bit too fast for you, pause the video, see if you can work it on your calculator and come to the same answer. Let's look at worked example three. Find the present value. So we see a little bit of a difference here. We're not finding a future value anymore. So present value, we're actually going to find P, the principal. We need to find the principal that is required to yield a future value of $6,842.85 after compounding it every six months at a rate of 8% per annum for four years to the nearest dollar. So I've got different kind of rounding in this question as well. And I know I'm going to have to be converting my interest rate and my period. So I've got a little bit of work to do in between when I'm stating my variables. So once again, step one, write the formula. Step two, state those variables. So this time I know that A, 6842 and for 85 cents. I'm going to convert my interest rate by first of all changing it to a decimal, 0 0.08. And then because it's compounded every six months, that means it's compounded twice a year. So I divide it by two. My value for I will be 0 0.04. N is going to be four years times two lots of six months in a year. That's going to be equal to eight. And now I can simply substitute that into the formula and start solving. So notice this time that I've got an answer on one side and I've got an unknown variable on the other side mixed in with all the other bits and pieces. So this is once again where bomb gas is important because we need to know what we've got to do first so that we can find the variable P. So first of all, I'm going to do what's inside the brackets. I'm going to add 1 to point 0 0.04 and I get 1.04. Now, the next step is I'm going to raise that to the power of 8 and I'm going to leave that number on my calculator, 1.36856, etc., etc. Now, I've got P is multiplied by that number. Now, if P is multiplied that, to get P all by itself and solve this problem, I need to undo that multiplication. And the opposite of multiply is divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.36856. And then I'll find that the value of my principal is $5,000 exactly. So I need to write that as a statement. To the nearest dollar, the present value of the investment is $5,000. Well, I hope you found this a very valuable session today. I hope that you've been able to achieve the learning goal of being able to calculate future and present value. My name is Natalie McClatchy. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.